of the first ever pilot skill transfer program to create a cadre of skilled workforce with the certificate of confidence and competence to play the crucial role of being an assistant to maternal and newborn care. For the Vision 2022 Skill India event, we are extremely happy to have the dignitaries from all our partner organizations. Healthcare Sector Skill Council, HSSC, AHPI, Association of Healthcare Providers of India, and Artist for Her. May I now invite all our dignitaries on stage. Dr. Neema Devakar, will be accompanied by Shri Ashish Jain, CEO of HSSC. Dr. Alexander Thomas, National President of AHPI, accompanied by Dr. Atul Mohan Kochar, CEO of NAPH. Dr. Sushi Chakana, President of AHPI Karnataka Chapter, accompanied by Dr. G.V. Divakar, Managing Director, Artist. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We begin this event with a welcome address by Dr. Alexander Thomas. It is indeed my pleasure and privilege to introduce the national president of AHPI. He has been a great pillar of support for this initiative. Dr. Alexander Thomas has led various committees for NABH accreditation of government hospitals in Karnataka. Over to you, Dr. Thank you. And thank you, Dima and Divaka. I think, uh, as Dima said, this is the first step, and hopefully, six months, one year down the line, you will see a very robust program uh, flowing out, which is going to ultimately benefit our patients. And I often repeat, repeatedly say that each one of us sitting here, be it the consultant, uh, uh, a very high funder, uh, OBG consultant, a poor orthopedic surgeon, or a health worker, I think uh, all of us are there for the patient, and I think we should keep that in mind, and this is one step towards it. So it's my pleasure today to uh, welcome all the guests here today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Atu Kocher, the CEO of NAPH, Ashish Jain from uh, HSSC Delhi. Thank you for making this effort. I know it's been a huge effort for you, and it's an indication of where you uh, hold these sort of programs in your heart. Thank you for being here. Dr. Shushri Jatana, who's played a very important role along with Dr. VC to get this program uh, going uh, and with the coordination. A very special welcome to all the assessors. They are the pillars of this program. Welcome to all of you who come from different parts of Karnataka. <laughs> to all the nursing staff and to the ASHA workers, and especially a, a very special welcome to those who are graduating today. Once again, thank you. <laughs> On behalf of Dr. G. D. Devakar and the entire team artist, we would like to hear many, many applauses as we go along. The first applause to the great collaboration with all the stalwarts that you see here on stage. The next one for our assessors who just joined us, indicating from ignorance to knowledge, darkness to light, they're always, always throwing light on many, many of our initiative. Thank you ever so much. The third team is the team of our staff nurses who have come from Bengaluru, Tukuru, Mandya, Malavali, etc. to get their certification today and we are really, really proud of you. Last but not the least, the Asha Karyakartas. Girls and women and the entire nation has to be in the pink of health. It has to be the pink brigade of Ashas. Thank you so very much. Things happen better and bigger if we are together. We have been resonating this right from early hours of this morning before and beyond. 
And if the vision is to skill India, skills are required in many, many, many verticals. And one of the key verticals is the health segment because we always say health is wealth. So the segment of skilling, each one throughout their life course, they need to be in the best of their health. We have 130 billion people in our country and we need as many as the trained and skilled workforce for the country. Let us do our bit for the girls, women, mothers and newborns. So we are here together where Artist Health Skill Academy endeavors to do their best getting our act together to walk the talk. So this collaboration is for capacity building and all of the staff here who are star performers are going to be getting their certificate called assistant to maternal and newborn care. Congratulations once again. We will hear more voices on the video page of what you have sent to us and very patiently very diligently, every single staff for the duration of 40 minutes to one hour, one skill after another skill after another skill, and the fourth and the last. The assessors have been very, very patient with them on a one on one digital skill assessment put together by Team HSSC after they have finished their individual online exams, they had to take this individual skill exams and then we were very tough on them saying that unless you score 70% you will not get certified. Why did we say that? Because whatever we are teaching them, now in that side they are simple, non-negotiable, evidence-based, must do standards. We have no compromise on them. Because something is better than nothing. <laughs> we want you ideally to start. And the staff has proved their worth because they have scored 93, 98, you know, and more. So that is the maximum cadre of maximum scores that we want to develop as we move along. So in fact, the first batch of training that we started for Asha was the interaction very recently. They are very enthused to learn more from us. So, uh, we uh, have tied up with several of our stalwart assessors here who have great connects in their own districts with their own political leaders and the government missionary and they are quite uh, happy and enthusiastic to join hands to train the Ashas in their regions as well. Now we have to have both quality and quantity. We need at least 1 million healthcare providers for 30 million deliveries and you have to be told in your own language. Now, Madhya Madhya Canada, do you smart? I don't know. Amina, will you speak Hindi? Why do you not speak Hindi? You know, it is the language-based courses that we are doing. So these are, you know, Vidya Tobi, for example, should be a Canada master trainer as well as a Marathi master trainer. So that is how we double up with the uh, language-based initiative and access and affordability. As you can, you know, quite some staff and the Ashas also to get them here to organize for the transport, to come, everything is time and cost intensive. Whereas this course, what they take, many, many staffs here from Mandya, Tumpur and all will watch, night duty will do good, night they'll sit in their own homes and next morning they have an off, but they join our program through their mobiles. And they're very, very tech savvy and so proud of their smartness in uh, trying to join us from anywhere, everywhere and move ahead with the teachings that we have and we do expect that with greater connectivity we will be reaching the last mile for sure. So 
we access everybody and make it affordable to everybody. That's also a vision. And thanks to many, many hundreds and thousands of my champions from Foxy all over the country, I feel very humbled when they support me in such a strong way because right across all of these states, we said, hey, let's go digital. And they said, yes, we are with you. And the training as well as the assessment. For the first time, we started scaling up the digital methodology. And I will be one strong person in the front line thanking COVID for the <laughs> digitalization because many within our Foxy circles said, no, this will not work. We need the touch and feel. We need the hands on. And to tell you the true experience, when the teams from Jepago, PSI, HLFPPT were going to the centers to train. Four or five nurses, two are on night duty. Three are hanging around. One is in the operation theater. Two more are running helter skelter. No time to just get them together to actually do a training program effectively. So that was actually the situation. The trainer used to sit there from about 8.30 in the morning till 4.30, but very little was achieved. Whereas here in the consolidated 90-minute program, very engaging, and the most delightful thing is the WhatsApp groups that we created. Shiva and Bhageshri and others will vouch for it, and we will create a WhatsApp. What will the WhatsApp group do? One set of target who are being trained, their thoughts on all the staff will vouch for them. Today we teach them the part of them. Within a week, whichever patient they have seen, they have to plot the partogram and send us by WhatsApp and it's a very healthy competition. Each one of them wants to outbeat another and the gloving, hand washing, they will do wonderful videos and send us from their own settings. So it's been very engaging and the cohort quiz that we play and the LMS system which allows them to refresh and retrain. We are quite happy with the system that we have established for training. Then the Centers got certified for Manitha, but the staff said, what about us? So we figured out a way, even for them, and we want to scale up this as soon as possible without compromising on the quality and the short skill training courses that we have piloted. We are happy that we have progressed so far, and we are confident that we will do more, and uh, uh, the strength and the weightage is sitting at the left and right. The strength being third party assessment which gives a very different perspective of the course and the weightage, the quality that is given uncompromised. So that's how we want to move forward and this wouldn't have happened if the organizations would not have trusted the first pitch that I made to Alex and Shanmugam when Sushil Jatana as the president of the Karnataka AHPI, me being the vice president in the executive party meetings, they said, no, let's do something about skilling because various webinars and webinars and webinars, we don't know how many are actually listening and where it's translating into. So uh, uh, the uh, pilot was started in a very simple uh, idea which went on to action and you heard in the morning Sister Geeta who is here who was very confidently answering the uh, skill assessment but when I told her to give a one minute video bite she got so nervous so I said tell what your experience was she said no ma'am I never thought I could uh, you know connect so easily and I thought only 60 minutes they are giving how can I answer and 30 minutes then all the staff, rest of the staff in the hospital shouted at her, why did you come out in 30 minutes? Maybe many answers you've written wrong, you should have rechecked again. <laughs> now you have no chance because it's gone. <laughs> the, the, the marks will be scored by HSSC and Anshu and Puja will not listen to whatever HSSC <laughs> said. Their father put down is gone. So she said, oh, should I have gone? Now can I go back? They said, no, that, that's done and that's it. So we found that, you know, the anxiety and the nervousness that they had quickly okay and the master trainers and the assessors really my hats off to them because their patience of each staff, them, 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 and I think the 
Now, Mohit and team from HSSC and the uh, Bangalore were also appreciating the whole efforts uh, taken by each other. And this is a fantastic performance. A big applause to all our staff uh, yet again and to be proudly working out in this circuit. And first step, we want to do our best for Karnataka. And already about 220 staff are in the queue waiting to take this, but we want to reach a figure of 1,000 in the next six months, which we will. But after that, how we scale up depends on how much support we get from all our sectors. And we are also um, not planning to import, but it's already in place. Because uh, Sonia will vouch for the fact about the fetosense, which is a pocket-sized fetal heartbeat monitor, is of a huge machine of a CPG. This is a small pocket. That how to use skill transfer also we have done in a <coughs> shortest span of 15 minutes to her and her staff. She has even taught it to the receptionist and the patient herself and they are all happily. You know the high risk pregnancies need not come to the center twice a week, once a week, etc. They can carry this and do it at home and send the recording by WhatsApp. So these devices are point of care remote devices. It's already on its way. One more thing, the EBCDE. That is what with Remar, Amina and the ASHAS team. This is a different module for ASHAS. It's called the ABCDE module. A for anemia care, B for building contraceptive choices, C for cervical cancer and vaccine because we don't want vaccine hesitancy for cervical cancer HPV as soon as it comes into the market at a low cost. D for diabetes and prevention. E for emergency, obstetric care, etc. The E part of it, what the ASHAs can do, help in breastfeeding, help in deworming, help in talking about anemia, help in identifying high-risk pregnancy, a lot of things they can do, which they are doing, but they're more empowered in a better way. And also, in their bag, they're carrying now pulse oximeter, BPI meters, etc. We give them more so that they can just move on and do more. So that is the idea. So the vision to scale India is merely on a mission mode and is a reality. So for that, as I said, one cannot do it alone within our own organization. We have put enough people on test for uh, stretching and extending and doing a lot more uh, that we expect from them, which they have lived up to and all the master trainers and SSS who are here. We want to expand the Canada batch of master trainers and uh, SSS because we are flooding Karnataka with this uh, training program. We have plenty of Hindi and Marathi speaking, but the other languages and Tamil also. There's a, there's a huge number who are will get it up, but um, uh, our local language, uh, we need more help, but uh, uh, there's a whole list of volunteers, but we have to do a separate uh, training for the SSS program as well, which we are very soon going to embark on parallelly to cope with the load of uh, assessments uh, beyond uh, the couple of them who are uh, already here. So with this, once again, my heartfelt thank you to everyone here uh, who have believed in the idea and supported the idea so strongly. Thank you very, very much. I am uh, competent in HSSC exam, Healthcare Center Skill Council, uh, which is very much helpful for me for attending a pregnant woman and newborn care. After attending this program, we have started to keep ready track to emergency, to a PH, to a clamshell, to a newborn escalation care, uh, for giving the emergency quick treatment in a good manner. Uh, after completed this program, we have attended some practical and theory exam. We are well done it. I am very much thankful for them, who are involved in this program, uh, for giving better knowledge about uh, to how to treat in certain emergency cases, example, uh, in case of a glamshare patient or PPH patient, uh, to give an idea about how to deal with them. Uh, and uh, I am very much thankful for you, uh, for, for you. Um, for uh, giving this program and conducting exams for us and providing certificate for them. Thank you. Giving my online exam, I am really tense. I had never done this before. Will I finish on time? Will I be able to connect easily? Uh, they have 60 minutes. 
I finished in 10, 30 minutes. It was easy, it was amazing. I am really happy to receive the certificate today. Divya, Tobi from Bijapur, I am one of the assessors. The performance of the staff in the assessment was very good and they were very confident in answering all the practical skill assessment questions. And uh, for this, I must congratulate artists uh, because the training which is given by artists is going to enable any staff system in this uh, course to take care of mothers, that is safe maternal care with quality, that I must say. And the HSSC platform which is provided uh, has enabled the various assessor for in-depth assessment. And this course must reach Pan-India for the assessment of the health workers. Thank you very much. And I really feel delighted uh, to see a lot of happy faces here that and uh, you know, listening to so positive feedback which is coming in, uh, as Dr. Shishi was mentioning earlier. That we normally, you know, uh, hear voices of criticism, but it's always good to hear some good voices about you know good work being done. So thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Dima. It's actually really been a lot for us and our team. And uh, from here, definitely we're going to do work harder and work better in terms of whatever uh, you know, in terms of see that how we scale it up for the entire uh, country. And as uh, Dr. Kochar mentioned in the morning that why only Manita, let's take it to the entire country and we look forward to take it to the entire country so that we can bring that impact quite uh, you know, um, early and not waiting for so long for this. Uh, although we have put a brief presentation, uh, I go very quickly across this because I need to speak on uh, what are the initiatives we are talking about. We are talking about Vision 2022 Skill India. Uh, but I am not too sure how many of you are aware about the Skill India mission as such. Uh, this is the mission which is launched by the Honorable Prime Minister. So that's the importance of the Skill India which we are looking at. So it's being launched by the Honorable Prime Minister himself, keeping in view the importance of the skills in the country. So very briefly, uh, Skills India is part of the Ministry of Skilling, Development and Entrepreneurship. So uh, with the uh, new government which came in 2014, they have created a separate ministry for skill development and entrepreneurship. Again, the focus of the government is very, very much on the skill development. Uh, we have various functional arms. One of the functional arms is the Sector Skill Council, which we represent today with Healthcare Sector Skill Council, for which uh, some of you will be assessors, some of you will undergo the training, some of you will be receiving the certificates today. So that's the arm which you have interacted with. Uh, our scope of training is not only really limited to uh, the mother and newborn care, so we are into the entire health sector. Uh, we, this is one of the programs which we are doing along with artists and PhDI to see that how we can make an impact in the rest of the area. So, also, uh, in addition to the bottom medicine, we also work in the area of Irish, where we have uh, recently given a mandate to work with all the Irish subsectors, which are Veda, Yoga, Imani, Homeopathy, Siddha, Roga, and Ashokati. And if you see at the root of the tree, uh, we started with skilling only, and we moved on to reskilling and upskilling as well. And that's what you're doing today, what you're going to certify you for, because you're already skilled. But I think the training program reskilled you or upskilled you for certain competencies which are among the standards. Uh, we, as an organization, Healthcare Sector Skill Council, the certificate examining body which uh, has conducted exam for you through the entire assessor, is an awarding body under the ambit of NCBT. So NCBT is like a skills regulator, like we have a nursing regulator as a nursing council for skills, here, skills regulator, which is the NCBT. Uh, we are focusing on other side skilling, reskilling, upskilling. This is the uh, MOU which is signed with the NCBT. This is a very unique experience, uh, you know, experiment in itself. It's like you know, uh, government and not government as well. So this entity is you know such which is bridging uh, or is a platform between a government and industry, and that works basically on the entire needs of the sector. So whatever you need is required by sector, we actually plan training that way. Again, referring back to the example of uh, the program which you are on the ground today. So, currently the uh, council is chaired by Dr. Nilish Tehan, well known uh, cardiologist in the country. Uh, we have almost every uh, known corporate hospitals, both from public and private side, on our uh, board, which keeps on guiding us from time to time what we need to do, how we need to do. And it's our strength also. This brings us credibility of what we are doing across the country. Uh, so these are some of the members and we took members from not only the healthcare provider, they are members which are coming from pharma companies, medical device companies, again uh, policy making companies. So all those are part of uh, what we do and what we work. 
डॉक्टर देवी शेट्टी इज आर चेयरमैन फॉर द अकेडमिक कमेटी डॉक्टर अरुण अग्रवाल इज एक्सटीन फॉर मौलाना मेडिकल कॉलेज इज चेयरमैन फॉर एक्रेडिटेशन बोर्ड Uh, why I am showing you this is because whatever we are doing is not something which you know which goes through a uh, scrutiny of such experts across country and then it becomes a standard, then it becomes the assessment process, and that's how we assess. So what we are saying, what we are putting a stamp or certificate, you are getting it probably all these people are behind it, behind the initiatives is done. So that's the credibility of the certificate you are going to get today. Uh, what are the major functions which we do very quickly? I don't spend too much of time, but what we do is we do a market analysis. So, what are the skill set required by this sector? Uh, we develop qualification standards around those. Uh, we do affiliation of institutions for providing training uh, in terms of where training can be provided. Uh, like we did for this program, we do develop assessment tools and processes based on the standards, and of course, monitoring etc. Assessment certification are the part. Also, very important, whatever we do, uh, our one of the mandate. Or manage the skilling the program mission. We do a placement facilitation for all those who are training. So that's the major objective. What the skills training we do that all people after a certificate should be employed. And that's why we go to the employer saying what is the need in this person. So every focus on employability. That's a key objective. These are some of the key milestones which have achieved over the years. So not again uh, very very quickly on this. Uh, we had till now certified three lakh plus people across country, and I'm not. Counting in the same people we have trained under COVID crash courses. That's another one that people have been trained in last uh, one year, which is required by the country and made them available to the country at that point of time. And if you see, we work across ministries. So, of course, our line ministry, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, but we do work with a lot of ministries who are part of the skill development. So, it's not only Ministry of Health, not only Ministry of Skill Development. Lot many ministries are working in the area of skill development. They spend lot of money. Say, for example, we talk about minorities. We talk about uh, you know the rural development, urban development. They all have wings where they do spend lot of money on skill development. So we work with all of them, and we do act as certification body for all of their programs in related to health care. Uh, we also work very very closely because that's where we need uh, you know we need to focus hospitals. We need to work work with equipment manufacturers, uh, healthcare providers. As I said, our focus is on employability, so we need to work with these stakeholders very closely, and that's what was reflected in our uh, governing board as well. We have a pan India presence today. Uh, while I'm standing here today, so we almost have 1,000 plus training centers across the country which are doing training on different roles. Of course, this is one part of the end, but we have different roles which we do training on. Uh, all states now have, after this, the ministry has come in, the Ministry of Skill Development, all states have now what we call state skill development mission. Like you have a state health department, similarly we have state skill development mission in all these states now, and we work very, very closely with them. Interesting thing because we're talking about impact here. So, what we did is we started working with these schools, integrated the vocational education with the schools at the last you know, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. So, what we did with, even before NEP thought of it, that at class 9th, the students were given one vocational uh, subject. By the time they complete their class 12, they have one the skill certificate which makes them employable if they are for some reason not able to continue their education. So it's again, you know, uh, making them, you know, uh, gainfully employed, they should have some skills in hand. But now with the advent of a new education policy which is coming, government has realized that this vocational subject should become part of the curriculum for class 6 onward. So the, we will start bringing in this education, vocational education to them from class 6 onward. And there is a national curriculum framework which is being uh, on a draft stage, should be announced soon, where we integrate from the formal education to vocational education back from vocational to formal education happens seamlessly. So the credit which is given, so if you have earned some credits in vocational, that will be counted in formal education and vice versa as well. So that also has been worked now as almost in my history. Uh, these are some of the roles for which we have still the we have already existing qualification. We keep on working new uh, qualification. This, you know, as I mentioned, COVID crash course in hospital management, patient care, curative diagnostic. These are largely in the areas of the allied health side, or what we call them as now as skilled healthcare professionals. Uh, we uh, we actually work in the allied health area, but now we have a separate bill which is regulating the allied health. So we had we have another, you know. Category for these people, what we call skilled healthcare professionals, which are going to work in these areas. And these are being also recognized by our line ministry as well, equally in that sense. Uh, another thing which we do very important for 
that we started with the allied health and now so-called skilled health professional, but we started moving on to programs for nurses and doctors. So whichever programs are required. So which being, and, uh, I'd like to state here, so we're not uh, adding any privileges to any nurse or a doctor, because that's the role of a nursing council or of the NMC that we are. What we're seeing in sector required, if an hospital requires each training of a particular area for a nurse or a doctor, those trainings can be created and we as an examining body can certify them and we certify they have undergone this training. That's what an hospital requires. We jointly certify with the hospital for that particular training. So basically what this only only speaks about that. So what we call them as a competency enhancement programs for which is industry -led. So when we say industry, say for example, hospital may require something, a diagnostic center may require something, an uh, imaging center may require something, so ART clinics may require something, so we actually craft programs around this. So very, very uh, recently we have program uh, which is uh, on a genetic counselor. So we have created a qualification which is now in market which will be taken up, similarly transplant coordinator. So we keep on looking at the requirements and we create those programs which are required, but th those are the qualification in CP we keep on creating whichever is required in the hospital. Uh, this is the photograph by the Honorable Prime Minister actually released uh, six of the COVID crash courses which I spoke to you earlier. Uh, we have been given a mandate to train almost uh, one lakh people across the country during the COVID second phase. We did it. Uh, Dr. Sushil is here. He also trained, their institution also trained some other people. Uh, across Karnataka, if I speak properly, uh, we have more than 100 government hospitals who took part in this, where the training has happened, where these people have provided in the hospital during the tough time which we're going through. And they all were paid by the government at that particular time. So that kind of training has been provided, and we were actually doing that uh, with the help from our training partners, uh, with the help of healthcare institutions, with the help of our assessors, examiners across the country. Uh, this is this uh, this is the second area which we worked. So uh, why I'm showing the slides to you is basically what we're saying is that we are aligned to national priorities. So for example, Dr. Himal has mentioned about. Uh, the anemic you know, requirement. So we are aligned to whatever nation requires today. Uh, we work well up along with them. So while the Aishman Bharat came in and the, what we call Pradhan Mantri Jana, the Yojana, some of the hospitals may be part of it today, even before the Honorable Prime Minister launched it from the Rampart of India, we started working with uh, the PMJ team for creating qualification for that, creating standards for that, what is required. So we had a qualification called Arogya Mitra. Uh, which is coined as P Mass, which is Pradhan Mantri Arugya Mitra. So these are the people who actually first interface between the beneficiary and the hospital. They actually identify whether a person is eligible to uh, you know, take the, uh, be a part of the PNG or not. If yes, what are the packages available, what he or she can get, and then they help with the claiming of insurance claims, etc. So this is the first uh, training which has been created even before it was launched. And we are training still today with the National Health Authority here training on these people on a continuous basis. Uh, even those who are already working with the hospitals are being trained on this. Uh, there is a software which is NHS uh, has designed for what we call a BIS software and the other software where they actually identify the beneficiary and the transaction management. So they are trained on that so quickly they can actually uh, look at what is the requirement, whether the patient is eligible or not. In case, you know, you, uh, we've heard many cases, the patient may walk in, his wife is eligible, but you know, the uh, husband is not eligible, to be found eligible. In such situation, how should we actually handle the situation? What happens? Because, you know, a person comes furious to you, my wife is, you know, showing the list, but I'm not in the list. How can it happen? So, we've been training them to handle such situations also, so that people have a better experience of going to the PNJ. Uh, we work across, you know, as I said, uh, very, very uh, integrated with the healthcare sector. Uh, we had created regional committees and the state committees, as I just mentioned, Dr. Representative Thomas actually chairs our uh, Karnataka committee and is chairing that and we doing a lot of uh, initiatives under his guidance there. Uh, we have expert committees like anybody do, you know, we create expert committees from across sectors to create those standards and models for those. Because we do, as I said, we are a platform only, we bring in the experts to create those. Things. So we, we are not experts for everything, nor the experts on anything for that matter. Uh, we also had uh, you know, multiple MOUs uh, for providing trading collaborations, associations, OE manufacturers, etc. Uh, this is last point on this is very interesting one, I think, which is we'll talk about this in the next slide in more detail. Uh, I don't know how many of you heard of apprenticeship, but you must have heard of internship for sure because those who come from healthcare background understand internship value of internship. Uh, so there's a uh, 
There is a program which I'll talk in more detail about in the next two slides with you. This is an international initiative what we have done. So what we are doing, we are not training only for our country. Like somebody in the morning mentioned, so many nurses train, they go to the, you know, across the, the globe for uh, better opportunities. Not only the nurses problem, I think we have got many requirements of skilled health professionals as well. We have got many requirements of caregivers across the globe. So we keep on getting requests from across the globe uh, for elderly caregivers. So for example, Japan, the government of India signed an MOU with them to send 300 uh, 3 lakh workers to Japan for those areas. Similarly, Germany is coming up for sign. So we have multiple MOUs between GDP levels where uh, large people have been trained and to be sent across the globe. Uh, UK is one of the recent ones which is coming on board. Uh, I definitely wanted to mention about the skills competition. So like we have an Olympics for our sports, similarly we have an Olympics for skills as well. I don't know how many of you participated or been part of it in some way. It happens every uh, once in two years. So we are just going to have this Olympics of skills which is called World Skills Competition for Healthcare in France in October. Where Indian participants will actually uh, uh, participate in this category health and social care, which is a global level. Uh, so we will see countries, you know, you know, uh, participants coming to participate. Last year, the first time participated is 2019. India first time participated in 2019 in this category. I'm happy to share that we actually got a medallion of excellence for the first time itself. And how we do this is, uh, it's again, you know, collaborative work, which I think Dr. Hima also mentioned. This person is trained across country in all the hospitals. They have gone to Vedanta, to Max, to even smaller hospitals, Apollo. So every possible best training is provided to the person. And not only training on the domain side, they have been groomed, personality grooming is done. They have been trained how to communicate. Uh, they have been given, uh, you know, uh, how to be psychologically strong while the, the competition takes place. Uh, because while a person goes to some other country, language is always a barrier every which comes to you. And last time it happened in Russia. So the, normally the model which is used to come out of the patient who uh, do the role of the patient would be a Russian person. And it's difficult to understand the language and how to interact. So we have interpreted, but you know how many times the interpreter between interpretation things are lost. So though people are trained on the language also, so that they can you know understand first time. So this time we, it's happening in France, so our competitors are undergoing uh, various trainings on different areas, and we see that we hope that we should come back with some. Uh, good response from this as well. This is the thing which I wanted to just spend one minute. Uh, basically, you know, you must have heard about internship as so I told you. Apprenticeship is one thing, you know, uh, which is a law of land, which is basically any hospital who is employing more than 30 people, be it contractual, be it uh, you know, non contractual, be it on those, they have to have minimum 2.5% of their workforce as an apprentice. You have to hire that much. That's a law. If they don't do it, they can be issued notice. Uh, although no organization has been issued notice till now in the healthcare domain, uh, but that can be done if this you know government wants to implement it. But that's not the intent. Idea is that as a healthcare facility, we should take that up uh, on our own rather than uh, saying the issues are notice has been issued. Also, one thing is during the stipend, uh, during this apprenticeship, the stipend also be paid. And the stipend government also comes and support you if it is a qualification which is approved by the fiscal regulator. So government takes care of 45% of the stipend which is to be paid, less 75% that comes from the, uh, the institution. The stipend is also fixed. So there is no uh, gray area here saying what stipend you should be taking. If the person is class 5th to 9th, is doing for the apprentice, they have to pay 5,000 rupees per month. And similarly for other things, you can see it on the board. And out of this 25%, maximum 1500 is paid by the government of India if it's a qualification. If it's a qualification. Uh, but institutions can go decide to go without a qualification also and can have those uh, without even, you know, can pay the stipend. And if you see the stipends are not too high, that can always be taken care of. So, why I raise this uh, slide and why I show slides every time is because that's very important for our healthcare institutions to be on the right side of the law uh, before, you know, some. Uh, notices comes to us and say that this needs to be done. Uh, what are the advantage? Very, very quickly. One is that these are not your employees. You don't have to entertain the you know, uh, PAF or ESI, etc. is not required for them. And of course, you are participating in the national initiative, which is required. You are cre creating a workforce, which is for your sector. And if you want, you can hire them after that, you know, later uh, stage as once they are certified as well. 
Uh, currently, many hospitals are on board. I'm just referring some of them for uh, you know, just for your uh, information sake. So many hospitals have already been doing this. We have a cross country which are taking these apprentices today uh, from areas which are patient care to management areas as well. So these are three uh, major pillars for us. What we look at is the qualification. When we create a standard in qualification, then we move on to training and then the final assessment certification, which has happened in the case what we did with artists also. We play some role in all the forms. Uh, in some cases, we only play the role of assessment certification. In some cases, we play the entire cycle role as in, uh, in all these three spaces. Uh, so this is some of the, you know, how the training goes. I'm not spend too much of time on this, but I just want to see how the qualification is created from our perspective. There's a gap analysis which is done that like whether it's qualification required, not required, expert committee actually looks at the curriculum, create a curriculum basically. Uh, Ministry of Health provide the concurrence to the program and all qualifications are approved and become part of the national qualification register. That's how the qualification is validated. Qualification. Somebody asked me the morning what is the validity of qualification. That's the validity of the qualification. Of course, training, there are many standards for which a training institution has to follow before that they can allow to be trained on those standards and they have regular monitoring which takes place in terms of trainings happening, not happening, what kind of training, uh, mandatory ABS is being made for attendance, etc. Things technology has been utilized in a big way to monitor trainings, etc. Then we have also law books and portfolios which are created for different articles. Assessment certification which some of you already kind of gone through. Uh, so there is a minimum assessment standard which is created, uh, which is uh, normally skill courses, we keep it 70% is a benchmark for us. Although, you know, given uh, you know, it should be 100%, but that will not reach that level, so we start with 70. It's like, you know, as a, as a driver, I know to drive a car, I don't know how to drive a car. It can't be 70% I know to drive and, you know, 30% I learn later. But to, you know, to raise our that bar, so we fixed it at 70% right now, but we like to see that it should be 100% going forward. That's the, that's the thing which we are looking for. Uh, you have seen that, who are your assessors? They are the industry experts, best in, you know, their class in that sense your uh, doctors, your, you know, your gynecologists who actually assess you on your skills. It's not somebody who is not from the area. So the person who is from that particular area, know these skills well, would come and assess you on that. We have started working with other digital solutions also. It's not, we don't conduct any pen and paper test. There's no pen and paper test in this skilling movement for healthcare now. Everything is online, barring the practical test. So no theory exam happens where we give a pen and paper, it is all online. Practical examination happens on site also and can be done online as been done in your cases. Uh, but practical exam continue to happen as well on site where the assessor goes on site as well and in the assessment. And the pass percentage I mentioned is already 70% which to keep the standards high for that matter. Uh, what we see, what we feel that what health institution should look for and where we can collaborate with the health institution more and more is apprenticeship for uh, sure. Uh, the competency enhancement program, what we spoke, uh, spoke earlier, in terms of the areas where you feel there's a requirement, you can share that requirements with us. You can even have your training program certified through us, we can do that. Uh, we have provision of creating center of excellence in particular areas. You can approach to us that you want to create the center of excellence in particular area, a uh, few more care, or whichever area you are you know, good at and you want to do that. Uh, we can work with you according to training calendar. So for example, if a training calendar is an institution, we can actually work with you to see how we can uh, devise our assessment calendar according to your training calendar as well. Of course, we encourage people to become associates with us, uh, which brings you up to date what we are doing, how we are doing. And this is basically we are trying to create a one-stop solution for you to get all your you know, uh, HR requirements from one place. That's, that's the idea. Uh, Healthcare organizations, I think what we require and what we are looking at is that uh, there has to be preference or admission for HSC certified candidates uh, in their entire process by any age, etc., which we mentioned. And I think we talked to them, uh, he's kindly said that we meet and see how we work on this. So thank you, Dr. Pichu, for that. Uh, we would like to see that healthcare institutions also provide them the preferred opportunity. You know. We talk about quality, we talk about quantity, but when it comes to paying them probably, are we paying them any premium for the skills which they bring on board? So we normally end up paying the minimum kind of a, you know, wages to them. So as a healthcare institution, I think we need to introspect and we can say, can we a small premium to them? Even if, let's say, means a 500 rupees extra one installment or a one, uh, you know, per month, 
even if it's non financial color can we give them a separate dress separate uniform separate color uniform a separate badge so it's like recognizing that skill that he or she has undergone that so if you put them at par with a person who is not trained who is not skilled not carrying a certificate what is the advantage for a person to look for a certification so we as a health institutions need to look at reflected say can we encourage this and this is very important we need to come up with study how it's going to impact the health institutions if you have a skilled person or a you know trained well trained person this actually impact your outcome as in the health care delivery you know your patient satisfaction your bottom line is also impacted marginally so but it is impacted uh, we also request because a lot of the uh, you know the bottom up pyramid roles are normally outsourced by the health care providers so they should mandate that they will only pick I mean, they should pick the certified people, not an uncertified people. So that also brings this revolution into the country. Recognition of prior learning is very, very important area. I think what, uh, all people, many, many people working in the country, not certified. Uh, this is one of the good areas to see that if a person has an experience, not certified, they can come under this program of recognition of prior learning. Uh, they can undergo an examination and assessment and get themselves certified for a particular role. And this is not anything which is created specifically for India. This is across the globe. This is the practice. So we need to see how we recognize the prior experience. If a person actually is of that standard, he or she is certified as as for that qualification. And of course, we look back to say developing our training assessment procedures with the healthcare knowledge. These are some of the partners. It's not all. I think it's been just put in some to give you a reference who all are associated with us in different formats, uh, working in different areas with us, which is again a reflection of. Healthcare providers, diagnostic firms, imaging firms, uh, emergency care provider, ambulance service providers, etc. Hi, I am Dr. Rishikesh Pai, the president elect of Foxy. As you know, that we are having the Foxy Manyata initiative, and I have been the administrator along with Hema, the convener of this program. And we have been training the facilities and upgrading the facilities, and nearly 1500 facilities are now upgraded for the Manyata program. But we would also like to train the individual doctors and the nurses and give them a separate certification so that they also can fill this gap in the chain of implementation of this upgrading program. And we have already started a pilot in Karnataka and I hope that we can expand this pilot all over the country during my tenure as president of the FOXI. Dr. Shanta Kumari, the president of FOXI says, we are happy to ensure the quality care that every new mother and newborn deserves by adhering to one nation, one standard principle. The skilled workforce of frontline healthcare providers and as assistant to maternal and newborn care is the key to make an impact on outcome. Dr. Jyoti GS is from the Ramaya Medical College. She's very much here amongst us. She has been a very passionate champion for this move uh, for the Manita and has been always been there for all the assessments and also for the training. We are ever obliged to Dr. Jyoti for her Dr. Jyoti is from Ramaya Medical College and Hospitals. This course by HSSC and AHPI is based on 16 standards of Manita assessment. In this, the individual staff nurses trained by artists for her are assessed thoroughly both for theory and practical skills and certified. Unlike in Manyata where only the facility is assessed. This is a valid certificate course and the digital platform used for assessment is very user friendly. So once somebody asked Mahatma Gandhi ji, our father of the nation, that how do you draft a policy or how do you conceive a project? So he mentioned that whenever you are drafting a policy or trying to create a project, you think of the last man in the line and then you cannot go wrong. You, you cater to that person's requirements. So this is one such program which is truly grassroots, which is very grounded and aimed at just the area which is very, very important. So thank you so much to Dr. Hema, Dr. Alex, Dr. Sushil, Dr. Bakar, and Dr. Ashish, and all of you for giving me this opportunity to be here today and see at first hand 
how so much good work is being done and already that artist in her for her has already done a pilot and now this is a proud moment for the launch uh, i think it is truly commendable to see such excellence at grassroots level which will have a beneficial effect not only for millions of mothers going forward but also for the actual workers and nursing officers who are actually <coughs> delivering the care because this will add value to you this will add value to your profession and to every outcome and patient you touch and every organization i can say from the nmh perspective is as strong as our assessors and master trainers we the nmh today touch touches about 15000 hospitals and uh, all that uh, proud feeling we stand tall on the shoulders of our assessors so hats off to you all of you assessors you are truly 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 building and contributing towards nation building because this is where it matters i mean you all are senior doctors and you've been there done that but now your every contribution every time that you spare uh, as dr alex uh, we were just discussing that most of the learning today he is hand holding nadh in so many ways today he is hand holding in his hospitals 20000 of those ahpi partner hospitals and fighting their battles for them so so that he is also a founder assessor of nadh so what you are delivering today your invaluable time i'm sure this will hold the nation in good stead so thank you so much madam for this opportunity i call on the behalf of the nadh and political council of india all of you and god speed to this wonderful program thank you so much It has to set chamber at everything in detail, and I am happy that I could pass and get certified. Doctor from Mysore, Namaste. And Doctor Sonia Mandapa from Mysore. The digital platform which is created by HSSC for assessment is excellent. Each skill set is being trained in such a way that the staff performance is confident and perfect at their individual level. thereby promoting safe and quality medical care we believe the professional competency of the nurse is as important as the knowledge she possesses thank you not only secretary general of the karnataka state hospitals and gynecological association we along with artis papa foundation under the leadership of dr prima divakar and the health care sector skill council of india would like to connect collaborate and train our healthcare personnel so that they will be able to provide quality healthcare to women in the maternal and reproductive child health sector this training will definitely elevate the standards of care we could provide to these women who come to us namaste good afternoon ladies and gentlemen um dignity is on the hat and on the as um mg Shri Dr. Kokar, Shri Ashish Jain, Dr. Alex Thomas, Dr. Tiwakar, the assessors here, um, we're proud of you, and of course, we're most proud of all the participants who have graduated today and our Ashka Pratas as well. Thank you. So much. Now there is an old Chinese saying that every journey starts with the first small step. and what we have taken today is that small first step this is a pilot project to iron out any wrinkles in the program assessment before rolling it out we just wanted to ensure that actually the program did actually do what it was said to do and i think we've done it well and in fact i'm very very proud here today um with dr hemati who's led the program the assessors and skill india as well because the digital platform that they have provided is absolutely awesome um really a credit to india's leadership role in it i think so after this what next people's expectation like a pregnant lady is always there so what next when is the baby going to come out completely the issue is that we would like to first roll it out here in karnataka and as dr hemati said 
in the next six months is a huge challenge. We, we, we mustn't underestimate the work that goes behind this. It's so easy for us to say, yes, we're doing the program, we're going to train 6,000. The people behind the scenes, the people who actually take the exams, the assessors, the work of the assessors and the coordinating function is immense, quite significant amount of work that goes behind the scenes. And I'm grateful to all of them. But after that, we would like to roll it out to the whole of India in various languages, especially in Hindi. I remember Ashish Jain saying, you know, this, you must go national. And because Hindi is the most spoken language and therefore the reach of the audience is much, much greater. But not only Hindi, but other vernacular languages because Hemaji always says, um, some of these skills being taught is much better learned when it's spoken in the vernacular language. And therefore, I think the challenge for us is to ensure that actually this training program not revolves around the tier one metro cities, but is actually taken to the small nursing homes and small and medium sized hospitals in rural India. That's where it's actually more needed than in the cities. So let's hope that works. But after that, I think this is a very good template for other areas of the healthcare sector as well. Emergency medicine, casualty, whatever that may be. Because once you've got the template, it's easier to scale up. It's getting the template first time right is going to be the, the important thing. And having ironed out the, all the glitches, it's now our sort of role to try to get some experts in different specialty areas as well. And one of the things that we should do whilst we are embarking on this journey is to learn from other areas as well where they have actually learned. Let's not all try to redo everything in our own way. We can learn from other places where they have done this and take away some of the best practices from there and actually add it to our program as well. So with these short words, I'd like to congratulate once again MRG and the team here, the Health State Council of India, because they were willing partners in this program. And Sri Atul Kocher as well for coming to the table and saying that actually it's quite possible for us to accredit this in our NIMBH program as well. Because that will make a big challenge for the small and medium sized hospital who are actually hemorrhaging nurses at this very minute. So with those words, the key thing is we can all do this together better. And that's been the theme of this today and it's going to be the theme of this program. And I wish you all the success and thank you so much. <laughs> Nadina Kirti a Belagisida, Nimagi do Yemme a Chapale, 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 Jeeva Bhoodi so vai terege, Nimagi du hemme chappade. Jeeva Bhoodi so vai terege, Nimagi du hemme chappade. Nadi na kirti ya bela kisi da, Gora na varias ke chappade. Chappade, 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 chappade. Jeeva kara aspatre si pandige, Nimagi du hemme chappade. Chapare, 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 chapare